So what if I told you I was gonna quit my smartphone for a year? Uh, why? <laughs> this thing distracts so much that it has now become the thing to which we get distracted from. One second, uh, I'm looking something up. But actually, it's distracting us from right now. Right here. I miss daydreaming, focusing on projects for projects sake, being confused and staying confused, not caring what's happening on Twitter, which lately is just about what's happening on Twitter, snake eating its own tail, enjoying my time in the place that I'm at with my own thoughts, or maybe just reading a book. All these things I'm saying are not new. We've been talking about the problems we have being distracted by our phones for a while now. China and I have done several videos where we quit the internet or quit social media or quit our smartphones for a month. But we just finished quitting alcohol for a year and that really worked. My relationship with alcohol is completely transformed. I don't have as much these days and I don't even like it as much, but I needed longer than my usual month challenges to get there. So, quitting this for a year, at least. Now, there are certain things I can't completely quit. My workout app, I'm gonna have this phone sitting in my exercise room and only use it there. I'm ordering a stripped down phone. It's called a light phone. It's definitely not a sponsor. because I don't even know if I'm gonna like it, but I'm gonna give that a try. It has some basic stuff on it. Texting, calls, directions, music. In a very stripped down, not colorful, not appified way. I have a lot of things I wanna make in 2023, so it's going to be the year of no distractions. The year of focus, is there a better name? 2023, the year for me. That's stupid. 2023, smartphone free 2023. I mean, it's right there. But I'm gonna take it one day at a time and maybe other exceptions that I'm not thinking about will crop up. I bought this nice tripod for this phone so I could use the camera. Several of these videos used this camera and it was pretty good, but I do not wanna have this thing near me all the time, so I'm gonna have to just get a different camera. Small, pocket-sized camera. On second thought, I might still need to take this for runs, for tracking. So maybe while I'm out running, I can use this camera, which is when I used it most anyways. See, this is how the convenience ropes you back in, but it's not gonna rope me back in. I'm only gonna use it for exercise and the camera while exercising. You know what's stupid? You know what I'm gonna miss most? The New York Times crossword puzzle. Wordle and Spelling Bee. Those are the things that are sucking most of my time. I'm super addicted. I'll probably still do them at the computer, but I, I shouldn't be just having that with me at all times. Oh my God, I was between shots and I just checked my email. I checked my email doing this. Gotta get rid of this thing. Whew. So, beginning next year, January 1st, 2023, putting away my smartphone, only using it in those instances and, um, Life will be better? I don't know, we're gonna find out. And I'm mostly making this video because I'm announcing it now so that you guys hold me accountable. But I obviously won't be checking in on you that often because I won't have my smartphone. I'll still be able to use the computer. I'm not gonna quit everything. Just, I just don't need to have access to all of this stuff in my pocket all the time. Convenience is such a tricky, tricky beast. The phone doesn't completely take over my life. Screen's turning on and off around me. It's a nice effect. The phone doesn't completely take over my life. I still experience things. I still notice what's happening around me, but it it creeps in just here and there, just a little bit. It just, just, just that's what makes it so, so evil. It's just a little bit, it doesn't matter. I'm just gonna do this thing. I'm just gonna do that thing. The reality is it's slowly taking over my entire thought process because I know I can look stuff up. The back of my mind is always thinking about the possibility of looking stuff up, not the possibility of reality in front of me. Like I'm looking at this tree outside. I could just be admiring the natural beauty, how amazingly sturdy trees are when they stand up. A part of me is like, could I take a picture of that tree and maybe find out what kind of tree it is? I don't know trees. I should look up trees. I should learn more about what kinds of trees are what. Gaining knowledge is a good thing, but that shouldn't be on my mind all the time. I should also remember that nature is here to be enjoyed. I should just enjoy this goddamn tree. <laughs> maybe I could take a picture of me hugging the tree and make some joke about I don't know, I'll figure it out later, but maybe I should go in my calendar and schedule a time to look at this tree every day. I looked at a tree every day for a month. Here's what happened. Got to generate that content. I wonder what my friend Sam would think about this tree. And drop him a DM. Check out this f***ing tree, bro. It's totally the tree's knees. A delicious treat, if you will. And it's not all bad. Being creative with your phone is fun. Learning stuff about trees. That's probably 
probably it could be a good thing. But that's what makes it so devious. It seems like it's a good thing, but then it's one little thing like that, and then another little thing like that all day long, and then all lifelong. And as someone who wants to create stuff, meaningful stuff, bigger stuff, that takes focus on one thing for a long time. This is the opposite of that. And then of course, parenting. Do you know how easy it is when your kid is distracted a little bit by playing something to just look at your phone to escape the, the parenting world? I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that. Parenting is hard and you can't be focused on your kid 24 seven. You do need to take a break, but maybe I'll take a break with a book instead. I don't wanna see my kid seeing me looking at my phone all the time. Or worse, I don't wanna be so distracted by my phone that I miss things that my kid's doing. It's just time to give this a try. I think my worst vice was alcohol, so I quit it for an entire year and it really worked. So I think my second worst vice, all the phone stuff usually Twitter, but also the crossword, the spelling bee. Checking emails, checking stats, checking the YouTube app, making sure you guys all haven't abandoned ship, money stuff, checking to-do lists too much, or just feeling bad that I should be doing certain things that I'm not doing. Feeling bad that I'm not checking certain things enough. This is bullshit. So yeah, just gonna quit, see what happens. China's not gonna join me this time, but let's, let's talk to her anyway. Hi. My wife. Hi. So what if I told you I was gonna quit my smartphone for a year? Uh, why? I mean, I know why. It sounds great, but it sounds impractical. I've tried this. My thing was that there were just like certain smartphone features that feel really critical to my life. Maps, for, taking pictures. Well, the, the phone I'm getting will have uh, directions. I use an app called Marco Polo a lot mm -hmm. to talk to my friends yeah. who don't live here. It doesn't feel toxic in any way. It just feels like a good way to keep like face-to-face -face contact with friends that I don't get to see that often. I take a lot of pictures of our kid. I'm gonna carry around a small camera. Okay. It just feels like a long time. I wish you the best of luck. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So you don't want to join me? Absolutely. 1,000 million billion percent no. Okie dokie. So there's a, you're telling me there's a chance. Mm -mm. Oh, okay. <laughs> <clears throat> okay. So it's going to be a little trial and error as I discover the things that crop up that are just convenience and not harmful to me. But I'm doing this. I'm doing this for a year. It's just too much of a time suck. I want to get other things done. I'm going to make a movie next year. I'm 100% sure that that's maybe a possibility, but I'm going to sound really confident about it so that I, I do it. And I don't need all that distraction on the phone. So that's it. Just an announcement to let you know what I'm doing. And I need you to hold me accountable. Like if you see me tweet on the tweeters, you should reply, that better not be on the phone, Mr. Benzene. Or some paparazzi photos of me out with my boys taking pictures with a phone or something. Cancel me then just cancel me. But we don't have to worry about that because I'm not gonna do that. But I will tell you what I am gonna do. I'm gonna get some delicious meals from Factor. Thank you, Factor, for sponsoring this video. And thank you for your delicious, nutritious, fresh, never frozen, dietitian approved meals delivered right to my door. And then I take them and deliver them right into my mouth, all over my tongue and my teeth and my hangy ball thing in the back. Uvula? I should be a food writer. Now listen, it's super convenient. Really delicious food that you just put in the microwave for two minutes. You got two minutes? You got two minutes! Oh, but maybe you want to go to a restaurant? Well, listen, I don't want to tell you how to do your job, but Factor is cheaper than a restaurant and takeout. And you don't got to go anywhere and be around like other people. Ugh, that. And the holidays are coming up, so you can save some money for your gifts and your holiday fun times. Maybe some eggnog, or as I like to call it, Craignog. And Factor is committed to ingredients with integrity. That is a good thing. It has the word gritty in it, but it's it's misleading. So you can enjoy flavorful chef-crafted meals guilt-free, like their creamy Parmesan chicken and three bean vegan chili. That's some good assonance. That's when, when oh, it's a bunch of vowels that sound the same. Three bean vegan. Chili. Three bean vegan chili. Their menus are updated weekly and they include 34 meals and 36 plus add-ons like smoothies, juices, snacks, things that weren't there originally, but you add them on. You get it. And now you could be like, well, wait, weren't you talking about HelloFresh before, but now you're talking about Factor? What's the deal? But maybe not because I've done several of these ads now and you probably know by now that HelloFresh 
owns Factor. So with a wider array of meal plans to choose from, there's something for everybody. Even your weird uncle, Dwayne. And you can get a discount. Go to go.factor75.com slash wheezy60 and use code wheezy60. Why 60? Because the 1960s were an important time in my life. We went to the moon, other stuff. I was negative teens, years old? No, it's because you get 60% off your first Factor box. Come on, you knew that. Come on. That's go.factor75.com slash wheezy60 and use code wheezy60 to get 60% off your first box. Now, back to regular wheezy, which is actually just, just the end of the video now. But thank you for watching. Looking forward to um, not seeing you as much online. I'm still going to see you. I'm still going to use the computer. So just, and now I'm going to get a lot of smartphone time in before the end of the year, because I won't be able to do it after that, so. <laughs> ah, there's that doom feeling. Oh, I love the doom. Oh, so good. Three bean vegan chili.